Next up, uh, Thomas Dvriga. Am, am I saying that correctly? Drevga. Drevga, yeah. Yeah, and Mark was already <laughs> correcting me. You're from Poland, um, all the way uh, 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 to join us. And, um, well, you must have been busy uh, lately, uh, <laughs> fixing all kinds of stuff. But, uh, it start, it, it, of course, it's not, about, it's not all about that. I mean, uh, Parity, uh, I, I know a lot of your colleagues already, they are an uh, amazing team, uh, just uh, as the teams of the previous uh, speakers, uh, building this stuff for everyone in the, in the world to, to use, uh, while putting their own skin in the games. Uh, and I think that's, that's really, really amazing because that's not a lab. That's not uh, uh, some kind of a pilot. That's, that's f like building an airplane uh, while you have already jumped uh, off a cliff, you know. So uh, um, I'm looking forward to, to hear your story, uh, uh, Thomas, and uh, to learn more about the route the parity is taking. Uh, thank you for being here already and uh, a warm hand of applause to, to Thomas, please. Yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, my name is Tomasz Trienga. I work for Parity Technologies. I won't be talking about multisig on this presentation, but please join us on the decentralized Q&A, uh, and uh, we'll ask, answer all your questions. Uh, so today, I would like to tell you more about what we do in Parity, uh, what software we are building, what, what technologies we are building, and what's there in it for you, for uh, blockchain solutions developers and also decentralized applications developers. Um, so there are like three main pillars uh, of what we do in Parity, and I think that, that the most major one is the first one, which is uh, core development or core and protocol development. Uh, everything we do there is, is uh, in Rust, and I will go into more details of what it is uh, on my next slides. Uh, then we have something that is like layer on top of that, layer on top of this core development. We call this middleware services or second layer services, and they are usually written in Node.js and Rust. And uh, also at the very top, we have uh, UI solutions and JavaScript libraries that I will also tell you a bit more today. Uh, okay, so core development, uh, which means uh, like these are the products that we, we have already. Everything we do is open source. You can check our GitHub. And uh, the, our main product is Ethereum uh, full node implementation. Uh, so the software that you are running on your computer, which is syncing all the blocks, processing all the transactions, and uh, verifying them. Um, we also have full, full node Bitcoin implementation um, that is uh, used by some miners. Um, recently, we started to work on IPFS uh, implementation, and uh, our most recent project that we hope to release uh, POC soon uh, is a Polkadot project. Um, also, for Ethereum client, we have um, a light client, which means that you don't need to process all the blocks, uh, but you still can query the blockchain in a secure way. Uh, also, Whisper protocol for uh, fast peer-to-peer -peer communication, but transient communication. And uh, um, one of very interesting projects that we have is uh, Secret Store, but I won't have enough time to go into details, but please join us on the Q&A. Um, so our Ethereum client, um, like what, what, what is unique for Parity, or wh wh why, would you, why would you like to use Parity uh, is, um, First, first of all, we have a pluggable consensus. So it's an Ethereum client that you can use to sync public blockchain, but you can also build your own private or consortia chains with it uh, and use different con consensus, not proof of work, not ETH hash, uh, but for instance, proof of authority consensus algorithm that we call Aura. Uh, we also have a tender mint implementation and uh, for developers for running a, a, a local chain, uh, you can use instant seal uh, consensus mechanism. Um, also, our Ethereum client is uh, standard compliant. Uh, we support all JSON RPC methods uh, that are defined in a spec uh, over various transports, so HTTP transports, WebSockets, and IPC. 
recently, we introduced publish subscribe support uh, in JSON RPC. Uh, and obviously, we also have a couple of our custom extensions um, that are unique to Parity, and you might find it useful in your projects as well. Um, some of the unique features of Parity, um, the, the, uh, I think like the, the first major difference we tried to do uh, with Parity uh, for regular users was introducing uh, Warp Sync. Um, maybe some of you already use that, but, but after the DAO hard fork and after the state bloat attacks, it was really painful to, to sync the full, um, uh, to sync, sync your Ethereum clients, to sync your full node. Uh, with Parity Warp Sync, we are kind of like syncing the, the latest states at the very beginning and then syncing back all the blocks to make sure that, uh, that the state that we got is actually secure. Uh, but what it means is that you can uh, use, interact with the Ethereum network in uh, something like 30 minutes from starting the node. It used to be five minutes, but uh, obviously the state of Ethereum network is, is really exploding. Um, the other features that we, we had right from the start is state tree pruning. Uh, so even though we are a full node, uh, we, uh, like the, the blockchain size is only 30 gigs. Um, I mean, the, the database size is 30 gigs, which includes uh, blockchain plus uh, some of the latest state. And all of the states, all of the historic states are actually removed because usually they are not needed for, for regular uh, users. Um, Tracing API, uh, this allows you to deep dive into what happened in a contract. So you can see all the internal calls that were made by a, by a smart contract and, and actually see everything that this uh, single transaction touched in, um, in uh, Ethereum state. Uh, FATDB, which is a similar features uh, used by um, Block Explorer or um, maybe exchanges as well. Uh, FATDB saves the pre-image of hashes, so you can easily enumerate all the accounts, which is not possible um, in a normal way because we store the accounts hashed. Uh, and also you can inspect uh, particular contract storage entries, but also in a pure form, not, not the hashed ones. Uh, there is also a generic PubSub uh, that came with uh, 1.8 version, and it allows you to subscribe to changes of any JSON RPC method that is there. Usually what you need to do is, is you need to poll if you want to get the changes and you need to kind of diff them on their own, or on your own. Um, with generic PubSub, you can just subscribe on the changes and uh, we will we'll notify you when the result is different. Um, some other features for end users include uh, secure transaction signer. So every time you want to interact with your node, uh, there is a pop-up telling you, okay, please provide your password now and confirm that you actually want to send that transaction. Uh, Parity Lite protocol, so this is something for Lite client. Um, since 1.7, Parity also have an auto-update mechanism. So if you are deploying, for instance, a private chain and you want every authority or every member to be in sync with uh, latest developments, uh, you can use our uh, auto-updating feature to um, deploy new versions of Parity, and Parity will automatically pick them up. And the nice thing is, is that everything happens on-chain. So you, you don't have a single point of fail failure, uh, like this, this um, auto-update server that, that, that Parity connects to, and that could be hacked, for instance, but the nodes can read the state of the, like, can read the latest version of, of Parity from, from the chain. Um, some of the, the, the last two features that you can see here are also for private chains. Um, and this allows you to also on-chain control uh, which other nodes your node is connected to. So the node will read the information from, uh, from the blockchain and then connect to particular nodes. Uh, and you can build whatever mm, like update mechanism you want for, for those nodes um, uh, in smart contracts. And also one of the features that we are working for um, 1.9 release is uh, private transactions, which allows you to store encrypted stuff on blockchain, uh, also encrypted smart contracts. And uh, those 
con two parties can interact with the smart contract, uh, and there is only only validators and those two uh, those two par parties uh, are aware what actually happened on chain. Every other uh, person cannot really read um, and figure out what what was computed on on, on chain. Uh, from our middleware solutions, uh, so the second layer services, um, we provide a couple of certifications and uh, uh, on-chain certifications and on-chain verifications. Um, those services include SMS and email verification. So uh, you can uh, you can on-chain on-chain you have an information that this particular address uh, actually is in control of some phone number. And you know that this phone number is uni unique. Uh, of course, we are uh, like the, the this is a middleware. It, it's not fully decentralized. There is an oracle telling that uh, this actually happened. But you can run th this oracle on your own as well because uh, it's open source. Um, PCOPS, uh, which is uh, on-chain KYC, uh, so passport verification of um, of people. So you know that this address. Uh, that there is actually a real person with a valid passport uh, under this particular address. Um, transaction scheduler that allows you to uh, run a transaction at some point in time, um, kind of like release the transaction at some point in time, and also network bridges that allow you to um, link two networks together and release some assets on one network uh, only because some other assets on the first network were, were locked. So, for instance, you can lock your Ether on public Ethereum network and then get some test Ether. Maybe that's not the best example, but the example um, the other way around might be a, a bit more interesting. Um, those certifications, they, they are just smart contracts, and we also have a common interface for them. Um, so you can easily integrate our certifications uh, in, in your solutions, uh, but also you can provide uh, y your certifications that, that you provide, and uh, Parity Wallet, the, the UI that people are, uh, are using, will be able to display certification status that you provide for the users in the, in the UI. So it's very easy to register a new certification only if it follows the, the interface. Um, yeah, and uh, for convenience, uh, this identification service that we provide is also available not only on-chain, but also as a, as a simple RESTful API. So if you don't know much about blockchains, you can just integrate with the service, uh, which seems to you like a regular Web 2.0 service. OK, um, this is the first pillar uh, that we are working on, so UI and um, DApps development. Um, with 1.9 release, uh, we, we have completely revamped the wallet, uh, so the UI that you are using. Um, and the idea is that instead of having like a monolithic wallet that we have right now, uh, the, the whole wallet will just con uh, consist of a thin kernel, uh, we call it shell, and a set of dApps that can be, uh, th th that create this like wallet experience. Uh, and the, the nice thing is that uh, you are able to write a different dApp that is, for instance, doing transfers and uh, people will be able to customize their own UI experience and use your DAP instead of the one that we provide. Uh, the other part uh, that is uh, one of our other endeavors in, in this like UI space is a mobile signer. So it's a mobile app for Android and iOS. And this integrates nicely with uh, Parity Wallet. And it allows you to store your private keys on this mobile device. If you disconnect this mobile device from the internet, you actually have a pretty secure setup. And the whole process is completely air-gapped. So you never connect your mobile device to your computer. 
uh, if it's also not connected to the internet, uh, you can have like a cold wallet on, on, a, on a cheap phone, for instance. Uh, and if you want to sign a transaction, if you want to send a, send a transaction, uh, you need to scan a QR code from Pali Parity Wallet, sign the transaction, and confirm the transaction on your mobile device, and then scan another QR code with the signature to actually send the transaction. Um, yeah, this is, this is what our Parity Wallet looks like. Uh, this is a preview of 1.9 version. You can actually compile master branch of Parity to get the same result. And this just consists of a set of dApps that you can, uh, you can use. And the last thing from, uh, from um, the um, end user products that we provide is our Chrome extension, uh, which is very similar to MetaMask. Uh, but connects to your local node. Uh, so you can go to uh, web-free enabled websites and interact uh, with those websites directly from your browser. So what we do is, is we are injecting this small bar down there where you can see your account. And also, whenever the DAP wants to send a transaction, you will get a pop-up there uh, asking you to confirm the transaction. Uh, so the nice thing is that you don't need to trust the DAP because this, uh, this pop-up there, this is something that we provide. So if you trust that we display uh, um, correct data to you, uh, you, you are always like, signing the transaction that you actually want to send, right? not the transaction that the DAP is pretending uh, to be sending. Okay. Uh, also, from Parity Wallet directly, you can uh, work on your smart contracts. So there is an um, integrated development environment inside Parity Wallet uh, where you can easily write your Solidity contracts, compile them, deploy on, on chain, for instance, on a testnet or your local development chain, and interact with those contracts to see um, if it works correctly. Okay, and uh, the last thing that I would like to tell you about today is uh, our set of JavaScript libraries for uh, DAP developers. Um, this pretty much consists of two main parts, which is uh, Parity API library and uh, 007 toolset. Um, Parity API library is, uh, is just a web-free replacement. Um, the code base is smaller. It's, it's also a bit simpler. It's promise-based as well. Uh, it has support for published subscribed and also for, for all the parity-specific uh, RPCs that we have. And you can use the library uh, on Node.js and uh, in the browser. And this is something that I'm more excited about. This is built on top of Parity API. And 007 libraries allows you to get uh, reactive bonds for your uh, decentralized applications. So um, if you, maybe some of you already built some dApps, but uh, before publish subscribed, what you need to do to actually display the latest state to the user, you need to constantly pull the blockchain state because it might be changing, it's changing every 14 seconds, right? And you also, uh, you, you always want to display the latest state to your user. So what usually you do is you have this like set interval, uh, pinging the, the, the nodes constantly, checking the results, comparing if they are different from what you got previously, and uh, updating the UI if, uh, if it actually changes. Um, so this is, this is like a lot of boilerplate that you need to write with every DAP, and it's really difficult to, to get right. Uh, with publish subscribed, it's a little bit better because you actually get notifications where, when uh, there is a new block uh, in your network. So you don't need to poll at like random intervals, but you can only poll whenever you get a notification. So it's like a smallish improvement. Um, with 007, the idea is that you never poll. So you just set up uh, your buns, your, your streams of events. You say how to react to those events and your UI will be automatically updated. Uh, let me show you a couple of code examples. I hope they are visible. 
Um, but you can see that I am importing bonds object from 007 parity library, uh, creating bonds, and then I get something that is bonds.block number. And this is actually a stream of events that I can uh, use to be notified whenever block number changes. Okay? So I'm using a tie method here to actually uh, kind of create a sync for those events. And every time block number changes, I want a console log to, to be displayed. And this is not really impressive, but what is really nice is that you can compose those bonds together very easily. So for instance, there is an array of, bo uh, an array of bonds, which is called blocks, and this array contains block data. So what you can do is you can say, OK, I want latest block, which means just give me block under bonds.block number, OK? And you get another bond that is uh, every time block number changes, uh, uh, 007 is actually querying the, the blockchain for the latest block state and giving you that block. Then you can take extra data from that block. Uh, you can map over this extra data so you can process it uh, some way. And then you create a sync, and then you console log it. And uh, this is the only like, line of code that you need to write. And this will automatically update and print new, new um, block data every, every time it changes. Um, Okay, this is some other example how you can use it. For instance, uh, there is a special bond called bonds.me, and it gives you the uh, address, the current address that user wants to use. And you can get balance of this current address and just tie it to console lock. So then every time balance changes um, or user changes their um, uh, his um, uh, his uh, default address, you will get a notification about the, the new balance. Um, this also works for contract queries or sending and transactions. Um, and in Parity, I mean, both of those libraries, they were extracted from uh, Parity Wallet, so this UI implementation that we have, uh, when we were refactoring it to this, to this decentralized uh, kind of dApp store um, approach. Um, and in, 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 in parity, we use React as a framework for cho uh, of choice for building UIs. Uh, so we also did a nice integration of bonds, um, this 007 library, uh, with React. And let me show you how it looks like. Um, this is an example. It actually works. Uh, so you just um, import this reactive element called rspan. Uh, you get the bonds as we did in previous examples, and you can just say in React, okay, please display like the latest balance of this user mapped over this format balance function, and this is everything that you need to do. Anytime balance changes or user changes uh, his default account, you will your UI will be updated. So you just do like this plumbing work, uh, no polling, uh, no set state, whatever. Um, it just works. Um, also, on top of that, uh, we, we use it internally in, in, in Parity Wallet implementation. And on top of that, we are building like a set of reusable React components that you can also try to use in your applications. Um, and this is provided by Parity Reactive UI library. Um, to be honest, this one is the most in flux right now, um, so expect this to be changing really often. Uh, but if you want, you can you can already try it. So this contains like all these boilerplate components that we need to use in in every every project, uh, every Ethereum-based UI project. Okay, and that would be pretty much it. Thank you, uh, Thomas. So, um, are there already uh, is the 007 uh, and the bonds? Are they already in depths that are running on Ethereum, as in production? And uh, I mean, how they are how are they applying it? 
Uh, so we don't track the usage of those libraries, but we use them internally in, in some of the dApps. Because this new wallet that I was talking about, this 1.9 version, uh, like each part of the wallet is actually separate dApp, and some of those dApps already use 007, and in the future we plan to rewrite all of them uh, to use 007. Cool. Okay. Thank okay. you. And Thank see you, you at much. the decentralized Q&A. Uh, Thomas.